football, you gotta love it. It's, it's just the greatest thing, and it's the greatest feeling. Being able to play every day, to practice every day, to be a part of it. In life, many men have talent, but talent in itself is no accomplishment. Excellence in football and excellence in life is bred when men recognize their opportunities and then pursue them with a passion. The new XFL will kick off in 2020, and quite frankly, we're going to give the game of football back to fans. The overall vision was opportunity and for the love of football. We're doing this for the love of the game, and the quality that we'll have, it will be remarkably different than what we saw back in 2001. There's nothing that this league has in common with the original XFL. The threat to the NFL will come not from basketball, not from the NBA. The threat to the NFL will come from football. Americans love football. Football is the number one sport in the United States by far. There is an appetite, even if it's not the best football, we'll watch it. They've changed the rules. They've done all this research. They're trying to make football better. And I don't believe this is something that was thrown together. This, this is something that has been thought out, processed, and supposed to make football better to watch. Fellas, you got to come out here today. It will be out today, fellas. There was enough funding put into the league to where they were able to do it the right way. We were trying to be fan first and fan friendly and provide something that was uniquely affordable and accessible. We delivered that and people loved it. Flew up to the XFL headquarters in Stamford, Connecticut, and I had really two days of just meeting people and understanding philosophies and strategies and thoughts. And then it was pretty much me coming back to Dallas and figuring it out. I was at the Jets before the XFL and running their social digital and just running into frustrations with the lack of creativity and how traditional the NFL usually approaches social media and the XFL had a posting for director of social media. I figured it would be the opportunity to really build a strategy from scratch. The actual league office up here in Stanford called me and was like, hey, we really like you for social media for the league. I was hired as one of the editor in chiefs of the website, digital content manager, but at the same time, I had my hand in almost a little bit of everything. The cool thing was is that you're on the ground floor of so many things. Before the XFL, I was with uh, the AEF. I was with Salt Lake Stallions. Through me getting cut and then brought back, people may not get another shot after that, you know, just hearing that last conversation. Once I got cut from the Dolphins at the end of preseason, I um, worked out for a couple teams and my agent said, put your name in the XFL draft pool. And I was like, you know, sure, why not? I like, can't hurt. I was blessed enough to get drafted in the, in the league. And, you know, I just, I just told him I was gonna give him my all that's in the tank, man. You know, I was just blessed with the opportunity. Dallas called me, I was like, okay. From there, it was mini camp, a couple weeks. New Year's and then right right in the training camp in the season. What's up? It's good. Ready for game day, baby. Great, man. Feeling great. Opening weekend was incredible. The first game was about as good as you can ask for. You know, everyone could feel the initial excitement for week one. When the gates opened, people were just running onto the field and they didn't know who we are or what we're doing. Or if some people didn't even know what XFL was, but people showed up. The teams run out and you walk out there and there's 30,000 fans for a brand new startup league and everybody's going crazy. I remember the first game, I cried. I was crying because I was like, dude, we've been up here like 4 a.m. to probably 12 in the morning. I remember so much anxiety. Like you only get one chance at a first impression and that was our first impression to America. The energy was just amazing, man. Positive energy is just effective. So like it just was effective throughout the stadium. So we just loved it. Bring an extra man, Tamu going deep again. Nice touch. Absolutely unreal. Energizing. I know what time it is, man. There's no fly zone, man. We ain't letting fly. We had all the momentum in the world. The end zone! Touchdown! It started off so well in terms of excitement, in terms of quality of play. 
and then we saw week to week that there wasn't any fade in the excitement. That's how we do it here, Dragons. I just liked it, the stage, you know, the energy that was brought. Come on. Hey, we worked too hard. We the best DB group out this month. And it's just been getting better and better. Dump in, it's intercepted. There's your guy, Smith. It was pure fun. They get creative, and the Battle Hawks have the sideline, and a kickoff return for Joe Powell. It was just unique for a sports league. They're in the locker room chugging beer. The barstool crowd loves seeing people chug alcoholic beverages. You combine that with like this raw, gritty high school locker room feel, and you get some pretty incredible content. Fox and ESPN wanted a three out of 10. We were delivering at the very beginning a nine out of 10. I'm out, good shit, fellas. They put people in a position that had football experience. They got a good coaching core. A lot of times I'd be wearing something rough and accent at first. You know, no one really knew what it was. People had questions, and you know, what is that? And then by week two, people were coming up. Where did you get that? I need one. Firing. He's got him open for the touchdown. Fans are thriving to be connected with their team more than ever. And we knew exactly the kind of voice we wanted to create. What if we allow the people behind these accounts to flex their personality? It's easy to forget how cool it is when a team or a celebrity will respond to you on social media. Making those relationships last and impactful are what really matters. Seeing the jumps, like 300, 400,000 different followers, like crazy spikes in social, digital getting almost 1.5 million unique visitors to the site. We were riding high. We were like, our football's good, our content's killing it, people are watching. It was like, okay, now we're gonna step on the throat. Like, there's no time to stop. The XFL did things the right way, right up until that week where everything happened. Now to growing concerns about the deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. We were in preparation for our third home game. We knew that there was a possibility that there could be some type of modification to the game. But, you know, going into that week, we were planning to play. There were talks that, you know, there might be a fanless game. And as the news kept coming in, you started to get hints that, okay, this really might happen. NBA is suspending the season. The NBA shut down and, you know, the next league shut down, the next league shut down. Vince McMahon, up until the last minute, wanted to continue to play the games. Once that game got shut down, I felt that there's a possibility that the league could get shut down. The coronavirus cases rising, employees was at the stadiums was getting it, so they had to shut everything down. We ended up uh, canceling the season. And then as the weeks started to get longer, I had an, an inclination about maybe we're not playing next year. You're paying people at probably a higher price than most leagues and you don't know when you're going to kick off again. There were some questions about flipping over the website, an off-season guide, and it's still to this day, like, a thank you to our fans. And we were like, okay, okay, we get it. Like, people come to our site, we should let them know. But I thought it was kind of weird because it looked like we were dead. Bankruptcy was filed by the XFL. I think everybody to a person was extraordinarily confused, conflicted, and surprised up to the week before we were moving forward. I can't say many people saw it really coming, which you could say now looks naive, but the way it shook out is like when COVID first really hit and we started talking about, okay, we're gonna play an empty game in Seattle. And then it became, no, we're, we can't play any of our games this weekend to, okay, we're suspending the season. There was definitely a moment I had where I said, this, this whole thing's gonna go bust. There was always a thought in the back of your mind what is this going to look like long term? And I think it'd be naive if you didn't see some of the writing on the wall. Got a call. By the way, it was Croach. I kind of knew that we're all terminated. During the call, it was a little shocking. But after I was like, wow, th this is really over. Okay, we're firing 580 of you. Left the house right after, and by an hour, like our emails were shut off. They had pretty much already shut down their office. Every number you tried to call couldn't go through. So in order to get through a spokesperson, they actually had to go to WWE. Uh, you know, we say unprecedented a lot right now, and I think it's actually for once the correct word. And for those that don't know, bankruptcy is a way to not have to pay anybody that you owe. And that's a way of saying our business is over and we can't pay you, we can't afford to pay you. They kind of just like tried to pay everybody off a little bit with our last checks 
it hurts knowing like you, you realize we didn't even get paid the full amount of the base salary that we were going to. It was presented as very much separate, but the financials came out and you could tell the WWE was involved. I think they were probably bleeding through money trying to see if they could keep it afloat and just saw, you know, it's just best to cut bait right now. I wasn't very much angry at someone. It was just kind of as a whole. I don't think that they did the best job, but at the same time, I understand. They had no idea. They were, you know, scrambling just as much as as everyone else in the country was. So I don't, I don't fault them for that. The things that ended up being the downfall of this league were out of everyone's control. While we didn't fail as a league because of the pandemic, the league failed. It was the best time of my life. Comfort is crippling. If you don't give yourself the opportunity to take risks and just stay in your comfort zone your entire life, do you really grow as a person? What do you really gain? The big takeaway is just to take chances. If you ask me if I would do it again, absolutely I would. A lot of memories made though. So that's some, some things, like I got my jersey from the team. So, you know, it's definitely can be something I can share with my kids and my kids' kids when, once they come here, you know. Tabu into traffic. Intercepted, Jeremiah Johnson. My first professional interception, you know, it's just part of history, really. Definitely wanted to keep this, man, so I can put it up once I get settled. No matter the kinks, turns, chaos, whatever, it was fun. What the future may hold, I have no idea. I think we're going to see at least one more league. There's people right now who are looking at the XFL's short-lived run and learning from it. There's a chance there. I don't think we'll see another attempt for a while, but there's a chance. I really hope so. We've seen how good it can be. It's needed, honestly. There's there's so many quality football players, which this league proved. It wasn't just a bunch of, you know, random guys getting up off the couch. I think that in general, it just shows that people will support it. So why not give it a try? It was a fun shit show. There were moments that the craziness there felt more intense. The leaders would go out there and like, we're gonna be a hundred year league. And I would always chuckle under my breath because I'm like, yeah, right. But the reality was it was probably par for the course. It was what you would get at any big time organization. At the XFL, we had the ability to respectfully say, kindly fuck off and let us do our job. There were those challenges and those headaches and that craziness. But to me, there really were like really good, really smart people. Um, and that's what I'll take away from it. While I'm still licking my wounds here and trying to figure out what's next, I'm not scared. Uh, I'm sad, you know, I'm disappointed, but I do think that what we created was such a, a terrific experience and I uh, just wish it would have continued because it was all just terrific stuff.